Uh, one morning when uh, beginning to get ready to uh, fly off to our remote um, schools uh, in the midwest of WA, uh, we noticed on uh, run-up of our 172M Cessna uh, in the Quebec Kilo that the engine began to run r uh, rough after initial um, start-up, even before we got to the, uh, the proper run-ups. Uh, we tried um, using the carby heat to uh, get rid of any ice. It was a bit cold that morning, but, but that didn't work. We then uh, ran up to uh, 2,000 RPM to see if there was any um, fouled plugs, but that didn't work. When we went to mag checks, uh, it vibrated uh, quite badly on, uh, on both mags. So um, we shut down and contacted the Royal Aero Club and uh, their maintenance division uh, sent up um, Lou uh, Peak, the, the engineer, to help us out. So after uh, pulling off the, the head and making sure there was no stuck valve or bent uh, push rods, um, he cleared us to fly to Janicott and after a few days we went down to, uh, to get things ready uh, in terms of having a proper compression test and fixing any problems. So um, we want to um, uh, thank um, the Aero Club and Lou in particular for uh, their uh, speedy um, arrival. They came within 24 hours of the call, which is really important for our mission. Um, there's a lot that goes behind a mission like this to keep it up in the air. And uh, we thank them for helping us out at a fairly uh, important time. Well here we have the uh, compression test underway on the left hand side you can see the air being uh, pumped in and it's about 75 psi. Uh, on the right hand side is um, what's in the cylinder and we find that uh, it's on nil zero uh, which shows of course that we got a big problem and uh, we needed to uh, take the complete cylinder off and have a close look to try and determine the, the cause. So the first order of the day is to uh, take off the uh, rocket covers, these um, black covers you see here, and um, that gives us access then to the uh, the rocker arms and underneath that the um, the valves and the uh, the push rods and eventually uh, the cylinder itself. Here are the uh, rocker arms uh, now uncovered. That's the um, bronze uh, shaped uh, items that you see in the photo here. Now you see the uh, rocker arms removed, the two holes above um, are the uh, tubes which uh, house the um, push rods leading up to the valves and below you see the um, valve springs. Time now to uh, take the uh, cylinder off so we start uh, unscrewing the bolts. So four bolts to undo, that's the first. Yeah, there's, there's eight all told, four little ones and four big ones. Yeah, okay. So that's the uh, cylinder off and uh, now you see the uh, piston exposed and um, underneath that uh, is the uh, connecting rod to the crankshaft. Here we have uh, a couple of pictures of the cylinder now on top of the bench. Now it's time to uh, take off the valve springs and so with a special tool and uh, these are removed. What is you doing up here than doing it on the engine? All right, yep.
There's those little circlips. Yeah, collets. They're yeah, collets. Them. Okay. That's what you had little um, Ben, yeah. young Ben helping out with. Yeah, trying to poke them back in. Yeah. The sandy uh, tool was uh, made some time ago at the Royal Aero Club uh, to get the valve springs off. Uh, really uh, interesting uh, piece of equipment. This is a close-up photo of the uh, valve spring. You see here the um, valve uh, stem cap and the circular bits around it are the collets which need to be removed to take off the valve spring from the stem. The problem was the intake valve wasn't sitting properly in the cylinder, hence the uh, carbon deposit on the base. Lou the engineer said that um, it was running a little bit lean but not enough to be a problem. In our next picture we'll see that the um, left valve is the exhaust valve, it's a lot cleaner, it was sitting properly. And you can see the uh, contrast to the intake valve which was a problem on the right which wasn't sitting properly in the cylinder. In this photo we're looking down into the cylinder towards the top of the cylinder where the springs had been attached. On the left hand side is the intake uh, valve area with the valve removed. The right hand side is the exhaust uh, area where you have the um, uh, valve uh, still in place. Top and bottom you'll see smaller holes, the, that's for the spark plugs. The, the bottom hole still has the spark plug within it. Now if you look around to the, the left um, area where the intake is, um, you'll see that um, it needed grinding, it, it's not clean and the valve wasn't sitting properly and that's where we had the lack of compression uh, originating from. So the first thing was to take the valve across to the machine, um, setting it at a 30 degree angle and just to re-bevel the, uh, the edge which um, is the area that would sit against the cylinder and uh, create uh, a better seal. So here's the uh, nicely cleaned up and re-beveled intake uh, valve ready to go back into the cylinder. Time to move back to the cylinder and here's the uh, intake area again. You can see um, it's needing tidying up. So starting off with uh, a more abrasive uh, stone um, in order to uh, grind that out and um, get it ready. And this will take um, a couple of hours actually, uh, working on it, uh, gradually uh, just working away carefully to, to make the area suitable for the, uh, the valve. You can see here also in the centre of the valve area the, um, the uh, round hole where the shaft of the valve goes up and to which the um, spring will attach later on that we saw earlier taken off. So here we have the grinding stone that we're going to begin using on the cylinder to get the seat ready for the, uh, the valve. And our next picture here shows uh, that uh, stone inside the, uh, the cylinder positioned in readiness for the drill to be attached. You see that bar going across in the centre of the, the um, attachment there. And um, then the drill is attached and we start work on the cylinder getting it ready. After the grinding stone comes this uh, cutter, which instead of being uh, used with a drill, is uh, operated manually. Next step is with this very fine uh, paste, which is like a very fine sandpaper, that's applied to the, the bevel edge of the uh, valve, and then um, it is uh, connected to a stick and then it's turned rapidly in order to just do a very fine sanding of the, the seat of the cylinder that will receive the valve.
and there it is a nicely uh, prepared uh, cylinder ready to receive the uh, the valve and to provide the seal that we need so the next step is going to be to um, take it over for washing both the cylinder and the valve to make sure that there's um, no impediments that would uh, uh, get in the way of creating good seal So here's the intake valve now in place. You can see it's beautifully sealed, just the way that uh, we were hoping to have it. And it's been tested indeed to see if there are any leaks, and there were none. And uh, here's a picture of uh, the top of the cylinder again on the left hand, showing the intake valve, and also the right uh, is the exhaust valve uh, both in place. So we're ready to start putting the cylinder back together again. Is a picture of the cylinder again and you'll see on it the red oil seal at the base of the cylinder. So we're back to the aircraft and we're going to put the cylinder over the piston. If you take a look to the right of, of Lou you'll see above the rag the piston hanging out of the engine. Uh, in his hand Lou's got a special device to help slip the cylinder over the, the piston. In the next video clip, as uh, Lou puts the cylinder back on, you'll see at the base of the piston the uh, connecting rod and also the crankshaft. Well, the piston is nice and snug while we saw in the cylinder. Oh, okay. Time to uh, test everything out and make sure that everything is running as it's supposed to.
So the job's done and Indy Quebec Kilo has a cowling back on and ready to fly home. An interesting flight, you can see it's cloudy and uh, did a standard instrument departure and got some instrument meteorological flying on the way back to Wongan Hills that day. And here we are back at the uh, hangar at Wongan Hills later that afternoon after a successful flight and the next day we took off for the Midwest to Mount Magnet and Kew for a trouble-free uh, 6 uh, 6.3 hours of flying. It was uh, fantastic. So uh, great to see that we're back in the air and thanks to the Aero Club and especially Lou Peak for getting us back into the air.